Hello and welcome back to the Fiat Ducato build series. If you're new to the channel, my name's Naz and together with my wife Rosie, we're turning this panel van into our tiny home on wheels. So we're finally moving on to a job which I've been excited to get started on for months. In the last video you would have seen us frame our window, finish our walls and also create a bulkhead. So the next logical step is to fit our kitchen. We thought long and hard about our kitchen design and we decided that there was no way we were going to be able to build a kitchen that looks anywhere close to as good as one that you can just buy from Ikea, for example. So that's exactly what we did. We decided to just purchase one from Ikea. I've already made a start on the preparation stage of this kitchen going in. So I'll bring you down and show you what we've done so far. The kitchen we bought came as bare units so we had to build a plinth to basically raise the kitchen off the floor we would have had to do that anyway because we've got an undermounted diesel heater once the diesel heater was in we could work out how much off the floor we'd have to build our kitchen and that worked out to be about 90 centimeter 90 centimeters nine centimeters <laughs> that clears the diesel heater ducting completely so what i did is i took nine centimeter wide uh, battens from b &Q. I arranged them in this grid format and then secured them down with 120 mil bolts straight through the batten, the plywood flooring and also the battens which are glued directly to the van. So these are really strong. To strengthen them even further I added L brackets just to make sure that this isn't going anywhere and also once the kitchen's in to make sure that isn't going anywhere as well. So that's pretty much everything I've done so far. Wow. Okay, welcome back to another day on the van build. We put the kitchen in about a week ago, and since then we've had the opportunity to take it out. So now we're in a position to actually put a worktop in. We initially bought a pre-made worktop from IKEA. It was the cheapest one they offered, but when it came, it took two of us to get it in the house and move it. So we just just decided not to use that because it was going to be too heavy. Instead picked up this um, timber board from Wix. It was a fraction of the cost of the IKEA worktop and it's also a fraction of the weight. So we put in this uh, offcut of 9mm ply just so we could use it while we went to the beacons for one night and so we're going to take this out. This is pretty much the measurements of what we're going to make the actual worktop. So just take this out take the measurements from this, transfer it onto our timber board, cut that to size and then we'll look at putting our sink in. Walking the road, trailer for the sailor in. Man, trailer for the sailor in. Ain't got no cigarettes but trailer for the sailor in. Let's stop showing this. I don't know what I need for. Let in the instructions. Radio folks. Radio oh, folks. Radio folks. Radio folks. I'm a leprechaun, my dear. Right, we've cut our work top to size and it all fits almost perfectly. Sticking with the same theme as when we got the kitchen, we've bought a sink from IKEA. It's the. What's that word, say? The Holman. Boholmen. It's £55, but it comes with all the fixings you need to actually put it in, either by undermounting it or by sticking it in conventionally. We did want to undermount it so we'd have a, almost like a cutting board insert for we're not using the sink, it would just basically hide the sink. Because it's a slimline kitchen, there's not enough distance between the two uh, worktop rails for us to put it in like that, so it's not going in like that. As per the IKEA instructions, I figured out that this is 
perfectly where we need it to be now, taking into consideration the uh, worktop rails that are underneath it. So now we've just got to draw sort of a template line around the outer rim of the sink and then the instructions say to come in by 10 mil to basically account for the, the south seal that the sink has. So we're going to work at cutting this out now. All the spits are on this. <laughs> All the spits. This is the moment of truth. Looks nice. Much green. Let's give you a closer look in. Look at that. I think what we could do is just like... Ah, sorry, there we go, happy days, yeah, no problem at all. Cut that down. Yeah. And, because this concaves anyway, so if we somehow put an angle on that, it should fit in nice. That's a job for another day though. Right, now we can stain this. Okay, happy days. Considering uh, we did that quite quickly, uh, it turned out alright. Yeah, like I said, we wanted to um, undermount this sink. But now that the worktop's off, I can show you what I mean. We've gone for a uh, slimline version of the IKEA method uh, kitchens. So rather than it being the standard depth of 60 centimeters, it's actually just 37 centimeters. To undermount it, you need a, a bit more space underneath than the way we've had to do it. And the reason for that is because of these worktop rails. So the distance between there and there needed to be ever so slightly bigger, maybe an extra centimetre and we would have been able to do it but to be honest this way is quite a lot less work and uh, hassle basically so now that the uh, sinks cut out I'm not gonna fix it in place I'm gonna go ahead and stain the whole worktop just quickly before I get started the stain we're going for it's Osmo top oil and it comes really highly recommended for sealing worktops I went for the acacia so yeah we're gonna slap this on see how it looks and if it looks terrible I guess we'll be back to square one and have to find a new stain. managed to wake up bright and early this morning to get the second coat of the Osmo top oil on and I'm really happy with how it's turned out. So now that the worktop is treated and is ready to be fixed into place officially, I now need to work out getting the sink in. Naz from the future here. I'm just in the middle of editing this video that you're watching now to get it out to you and I realized that I'd lost quite a lot of the footage from when I actually did the the next things to this kitchen so I quickly just want to show you what we've done following from actually getting the, the worktop installed and the sink put in. So the next step was basically to tackle all the plumbing. Basically what we did is just followed the instructions and fitted that exactly how it told us to and then run that down into our grey waste. So I think first of all, I will run the clips of that getting installed.
So there we go, nice and easy. All I had to do extra was cut a few holes in our shelves. And as you saw from the video, it fits beautifully. And we're really happy with how little real estate this takes up within our kitchen. With it being a small kitchen, we didn't want to eat up too much space. And uh, thankfully, it hasn't. So in terms of getting the fresh water from the tank to the sink, I didn't want a lot of plumbing in that sense. So I basically went on Amazon and I found a USB rechargeable tap that is meant to go on the top of these big uh, water containers. All I did is drill a small hole in our worktop and feed the line down into our fresh water tank and it's worked out perfectly. The tap isn't the prettiest, but it does serve its purpose. It's just two buttons on top. One is on and then one is preset to dispense uh, 600 mil. And aside from that, the only other things I've done which were off camera was put a nice speed of white around the sink because uh, it didn't look the best. And then you would have seen me and Rosie deliberating about making sort of a sink insert. But we did manage to do it using an off cut and that's been stained and sealed exactly the same way as the rest of the kitchen unit. It's actually worked out really, really good, and we're really happy with the final finish. So, you've seen how it was built, but now I'll show you the final result. So there we go, that is pretty much our kitchen completely finished. This has been one of them things in the van build that has really made this space much more usable and feel much more like our home. And we can't wait to use it on the road. We really hope you did enjoy this video. If you've got any questions or comments about our kitchen or just about van builds in general, leave them down below and I will get back to you as soon as I can. As always, if you did like the video then please drop it a like, it helps out the channel a lot. And if this is the first video of ours that you're seeing, then please consider subscribing down below and join to watch the rest of the van build and our travels in the very near future. Stay tuned for the next one where I show you our sofa being built and also our overheads being built. But until then, I'll catch you next time.